down here to the weekend, maybe you can uh, just bring it down. Yeah, that that would be cool. That'd be cool. You guys got the good camera. Reminder before we start that uh, there's no video uh, in this room. Uh, when you ask a question, please address it to a uh, specific player when we're doing the player aspect of the interviews. Format of a press conference is we'll start with an opening statement from Coach Anderson. Then we'll take the uh, questions for the players. We'll complete the questions with the players, dismiss them, and then go back to Coach Anderson. Coach Anderson. Wow, what a game to open up the tournament on Friday. Uh, two teams I thought they were evenly matched, and uh, it's kind of like the team that probably had the possession, uh, the last was going to win it. And uh, we went down one, and then we made a play on the ball defensively, and Jalen, I think, came up with a layup. And, uh, and our guys, again, our guys just found a way. It was a kind of a grinding game, and then you had some spurts there where each team went up, but it was back and forth. And my hat's off to Kevin and his team, man. They're, they're, they're tough because they can attack and create, and then you got the leading rebounder in the country in Delgado. But I thought we did a pretty good job on him. And that's what it took. It took a tremendous defensive effort by our basketball team tonight. We, I kind of shortened my bench, if you notice, uh, but I had some guys that had a nice rhythm going. And, and, I, and I don't know what happened to Moses, but he awakened today. And, uh, he was big, uh, but it's a good win for us, and uh, uh, we're looking forward to, to, to advancing. Questions? 
Questions for the players? Eric Cole in SEC country. Um, Moses, what did happen? I mean, what, what was the uh, reason for your awakening? Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's um, we're not going home. And um, I had, had to bring it. And my team's looking up to me to bring it in games like this. And that's what I think that's what I did. Uh, Dusty and Jalen, Bobby Swafford, KFSM in Fayetteville. Uh, we're down eight with about seven minutes left. What was the mindset? What did you hear from Coach Anderson? And what did you do differently at that point? Because it kind of seemed like you guys helped slow down the Seton Hall guards from that point. Uh, well, Coach just told us to keep chipping away. Um, we, we, he knows we don't lose our head. We've, we've been down a lot this year. And um, we, we just stayed focused at the task in hand. And uh, we knew we had to get stops. They were, we were trading buckets. And then when we stopped hitting buckets, they kept getting them. So. Once we started getting stops and pushing the tempo, uh, the game uh, was going in our favor. Um, hey, uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat is that Jalen, could you describe the play? You guys were down 60 or 70, 69. You knocked the ball away from Carrington. I think you knocked it to Manny. Then you got down and got the layup. Just could you describe that play? Is that the play before I, I mean, when I missed free throw? I didn't miss free throw? No, you, you, you hit a layup, put you guys up by one. Oh, that play. Oh, I just um, just try to defend like I can, pressure the ball and just get steals, deflections, whatever, to get the loose ball. And Manny always in the right spot when I'm doing that, so that's what happened. Jeff Goodman with ESPN. Uh, both Jalen and Coach Anderson, what did you think of the, the flagrant one there at the end? I think it was – I didn't know he was going to push me like that. Honestly, I ain't never felt like that. I was actually – Kind of surprised that he pushed me like that, but I mean, I don't know if he's trying to make a play on the ball or what, but I mean, it came in our favor. I knocked down two free throws and it helped out a whole lot. We'll let Coach Anderson address that after the players are finished. There. I guess, I guess just, for, just for any of y'all, just how, how good does it feel to win a game like that in advance? Because you guys have, been in, you have done a really good job in close games. Do you think? That, that experience helped you guys a lot today, did Dusty or uh, who, you know, Jalen, or maybe both of you guys take that? Um, yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, we've been in a lot of those this year, and I know, you know, the guys on the team last year, we, we lost a lot of close ones like that. So, you know, you live and you learn in situations like that, and I think we're, we're built for close games like that. You obviously don't want to be, and your, your dream is to win them, you know, comfortably, but, you know, when, when it's a grimy and a two point game, I think that's when we're at our best. Yeah, I think so as well. I think we don't have no pressure as a team. When we seen them go up, I think eight, we wasn't kind of worried because we knew we was going to come back and make a run. So I think having close games like that is fit for us. Moses, as great as your game was today, how big was it, the play of Dustin Thomas? Um, it, it was big. It was huge. Um, he knocked down a, 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 um, a few. Up wide open shots, which we needed because the bigs weren't coming out there to guard him. We needed him to stretch the floor, make some good passes. He was good in, on the defense. And so he played very, very an awesome game to help us get this win. Moses, obviously, a lot of people are going to talk about is that now you got the win, the block with about 18 minutes left in the game. The guy goes in for a dunk. You put him on his backside. What did you see and what did you think after you made that? Um, yeah, coach said you gotta protect. You gotta protect the paint. Um, that's what I, I tried to do today. They told me um, because some of, sometimes my guards are gonna get beat. I gotta be the last line of defense, and I can't get give up anything easy. And that's what I I, I try to do. Go after the ball, and I'm, I'm very glad I got the block. Last question for the players. Oh, me? Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought you were somebody else. Um, hey, for, for, for Jalen and, and, and Dusty, what did you guys think of Moses' game today, both on both ends? Because he had a lot of blocks, a lot of points, you know. I think he had an outstanding game, honestly, you know, blocking shots. I think when he got the block, when he was about to dunk, that was really a turning point for us because I think they went up five, and it helped us a whole lot to get back in the momentum that we needed. But just protecting the rim and just getting buckets out the buckets and doing what he do best, honestly. Um, you know, I've played with Moses since 10th grade, and he's he's just grown as a player every year that I've ever been around him. And you know, now it's it's almost peak Moses, and I, I'm I'm glad that the world got to see him. Uh, it's all it's fun to play with him, and on that defensive end, you better come in there strong, or it's going to get whipped right back out there. Okay, let's d dismiss the players. Let them go back to the locker room. How about them hogs? <laughs> Good job. Good job. Questions for Coach Anderson. 
Mike, you guys, uh, Carrington, you know, great player. You guys forced turnovers on back-to-back -back possessions after you were down by one. How, how big were those defensive plays? And what do you think of Jalen's play? He knocks it away, then he gets the, the go-ahead bucket on the other end. Well, actually, he was playing terrible defense. That was that Matador defense I tell him sometime he plays. But uh, he was in the right place at the right time in terms of Jalen. Uh, the ball was – he dribbled the ball behind him, and Jalen was able to deflect from – from behind, and I thought it was a big play, especially uh, where we had just went down one point. Uh, Mr. Free throw, and I think they got a layup on the other end. Uh, but when you, what was your other question at the beginning? Just how you, you forced Carrington, a really good player, in the yeah, back to back yeah, turnovers. Yeah. I, I thought our defense got dialed in right there at the end. I mean, we had put Manuel out there, and I think we had Dusty off, off the floor, and uh, we had a nice group out there, had a nice rhythm. Uh, they were locked in. I mean, coming off the screen, I thought Moses came up there one time, and, and we double up on him. Uh, I, I thought our guy, I thought fatigue was a factor in this game. You know, sometimes when fatigue happens, your decision making is not as quick. You know, early in the game, they were attacking us, getting to the basket, whipping that ball around. But as the game went on, they kind of slowed down on those decisions. So I would like to think, you know, that was part of it, as well as our guys were, uh, they were in that moment, and uh, they made plays. Defensively, in the back, Coach uh, Errol Reese, Sports Out Radio. Uh, when your team, uh, when they went on a 9-0 roll, Ron, you called timeout. I was curious what you shared with your kids, because uh, I know uh, it was three, two three pointers and uh, and one that got them to nine, nine points, nine point run. What did you say to your kids to get them to bounce back the way they did? Well, I thought number one, we had to settle down and get back to doing what, what you know. In the first half, it was an even close game. I thought we were guarding, we were defending. Uh, I thought we lost our composure. I really did. You know, I, uh, I always say you're going to win championships or uh, you're going to win games with defense. I thought we went offensive minded, and so we started trying to do it individually. Uh, and I told our guys, that, that's not who we are. And I think once we did that and we got some basket, we went right inside to Moses. We went into the bell cow, and he delivered for us. He made some buckets, got to the free throw line. Now we get Delgado in foul trouble. So it was, a, uh, it was an effort of, of really let's establish inside. And it's amazing how that opens up the outside. And then, of course, now you get to the free throw line. We thought we could go off the dribble on those guys. And, uh, and, and it really came in, in hand during those times when, uh, when they went up, they were on the run. It's a game of runs. And so we had a run to come back at them. Uh, Mike, hi, Steve Politi from NJ.com. There seems to be consensus for people who've seen the replay of the flagrant foul that it was a borderline call. I'm curious, what did you see when you, when you saw it? And what are your thoughts on, on a call like that turning in game that was so close? I thought there was no play on the ball. That's as simple as that. I mean, it, it was no play on the ball. He pushed the guy down. You saw it. I saw it. I mean, that's uh, what's borderline when you say, you know what, he didn't play on the ball. So, I mean, we, we've had something like that take place too. So, uh, it just, it just came at, at, a, at a bad time, probably the right time for us. Uh, but I, I just didn't think the play, there was a play on the ball. Brian? Dudley Dawson with Hogs Illustrated. The, you got some great play out of Dustin Thomas today. Just talk about his minutes and what he had in the game. That was probably from start to finish Dustin Thomas' best game as a, as a Razorback. And it was needed uh, because their, their defensive scheme was to stack it, was pack it in there and guard Moses and leave the, the – uh, leave that forward open. And so he knocked down some shots. I thought he was active defensively. He was on switches. He was guarding guards. Uh, uh, he, he looked like he was real comfortable. And that's the most minutes he's played, the most minutes he's played this year. Uh, so it was productive, and it was much needed. We're the ultimate team. you got to have somebody, somebody to, to step up for you. And we got four guys in double figures. And, uh, and you look at the bench, seven points off our bench, that's, that's, that's very rare. But the beauty of that is now the starters. We had uh, four starters that uh, that all scored, they scored in double figures. Coach K Mack from Buzz Boys Radio. Um, real quickly, you you guys had an advantage uh, in turnovers, uh, points off of turnovers. What was one? Of, what was one of the keys to you guys being able to get out and get on an early run off of turnovers? Well, it's funny because in the first half we only got two points off turnovers, and I think we missed about five layup five layup opportunities whether we charge or not make the right decision or they make a great play and block it. Uh, and I thought in the second half we made, once we sped them up or turned them over, I thought we made better decisions with the basketball. Uh, uh, and we're a team, a second half team. Uh, we, you don't know when it's gonna come. Those runs are gonna come, those turnovers are gonna come. And today, 
We needed that. We had 12 steals. We needed it because they were just attacking us on the glass. 21 offensive rebounds. I mean, you don't win those kind of games unless you got to change the possession game some kind of way. And I think that was the difference in the game today. We, we, we utilized those turnovers and scored, scored off of them. You mentioned the rebounds there, Coach. We talked about it all week that you needed to control yourself on the glass. Did you ever imagine a game you could win being minus 14 in that category? We've done it before. It's, it's not something I, I marvel at, but uh, we've done it before. Uh, uh, we've got to get better at it. As we continue to move in this, this tournament, we've got to get much, much better at it. I mean, that, but you've got to remember now, Seton Hall, that's what they do. Right? Put it up there and go get it. And, and when you got Delgado, I mean, you, we paid a whole lot of attention to him. And so now you got other guys that are uh, that are getting rebounds for them. So we, we got to get better at that. Coach, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, sir. All right, once again, we'll have the same uh, format, an opening statement by Coach Willard, and we'll take the questions for the players. JP. That's my opening statement. Just give an opening. I don't do opening statements. No, uh, questions for the players? Uh, Angel, you and Moses kind of battled the entire game. Um, coming down in those final minutes, what was – what was the difference this time? I don't know what to tell you. It's, we just was playing hard, and we both battled. That's it. Uh, J.P. Pelsman, New Jersey. Uh, this is for Madison. Uh, obviously, you've been around a while. Uh, you played uh, a lot of college basketball. In, in, a call like that, do you feel that maybe the call on Desi, do you think that maybe it sh intent should be looked at more than maybe the letter of the law? Uh, I mean, whatever the whatever the ref decision was, I guess that's what he believed was right. So, um, I mean, they went and, went and replayed and looked at it, and they made the call that they thought was right. This for both the players, uh, Gary Carino from Connect, New Jersey, Angel, Madison. Considering you know the season you had and the the game that you played for most of this game with an eight point lead, how how difficult is this to swallow the way the game ended? Uh, I mean, it's definitely difficult um, for me, especially being the last game I played. But I mean, I'm still beyond proud of our team and what we accomplished this year, and um, I can't thank everybody enough. I think we played unbelievable year. We everybody played good all year. You just how is this is how is the game? Somebody wins, somebody loses. That's how it is. For both players, Steve Plitty and Yenacom, to only score three points in the final six, seven minutes, I mean, anything you can pinpoint on to what happened during, during the rest, end of the game? Um, I mean, we just um, had a few costly turnovers down the stretch that cost us, but you know, other than that, that's pretty much. Yeah, I think we got a lot of turnovers in the last six minutes, but that's how it's the game, man. We just got to 
take care of the ball more. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Questions for Coach Willard? Uh, Kevin, uh, what can you say about the way it kind of, I mean, just the way you, you guys had an eight point lead and just it just kind of dissipated you. Is there anything in particular you can point your finger at that, that happened down the stretch for you guys? You, you know, I, I think the free throw line really hurt us a little bit. Um, we had a couple times where they had, I think it was 66, 58, if I'm right. Um, Kingsley gets, gets fouled, makes two free throws. Um, we missed two, I think it was. They come down and hit two really tough shots. Um, I, I thought it was a two teams battle and playing really hard. We had our opportunities. We, we missed a couple. We missed an offensive rebound. We missed a tip in. Uh, we missed a little bang shot. I mean, we had our opportunities. It's just you got to give them credit. They played. They played really well. Kevin, have you had a chance to see the replay of the foul and, and your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I just watched it. You know, I, I, I thought the three guys tonight did a, did a really good job. Uh, it was a physical, at, physical, athletic game. You know, I think you know it, it's one of those things you gotta. If you've been around the game long enough, you, you got you got to know time score. You got to know what's going on, and you know, it's an NCAA tournament game. I think they gotta you gotta you really gotta understand what's going on. But they roughed a good game all night, so I can't really complain about whether I agree with it or not. I'm always going to disagree with it. That's what coaches do. Um, Zach Brazil, New York Post. On that last possession, before the uh, the flagrant foul is called, there's a replay circulating now online of the Arkansas player taking three steps um, before dribbling, and then the flagrant foul is called on the other end. Just your thoughts on that, those two, the one non-call, and then that call against you guys. Zach, that's part of the game. We shouldn't have been in that situation, to be honest with you. We're up one with the ball. Um, we're up one with the ball with a minute 20, I think, somewhere in that range. We turn it over. We come down. We miss a layup. Um, so, you know, it's, it's one of those things. I don't think, you know, we should never put ourselves in that situation. We, we had a chance if we just take care of the ball with a minute 20 left. You, you know, you, you don't want to leave it to other people. We, we had the chance. You know, we talked about that. Was, we talked about that in the timeout on the under, under four timeout about learning from the Villanova game and, you know, finishing off games and, you know, uh, you know, I'm not a big, I'm a big believer that anytime someone just comes and reaches behind someone and, and gets the ball, it's physically impossible to reach behind somebody and back tip a ball. And it happened twice. I think that's my only complaint that, I'd, that I would have about the, about officiating was, I just don't think it's humanly possible for someone to reach behind somebody and back tip a ball. I've, I've played, I have pretty long arms. I know I can't do it, but you know, maybe they have extra super long arms and, and can do it. But I thought, that, again, I, I thought the, the game was tremendously officiated. I just, those are the kind of things that, that's the only thing I disagree with. Kevin, uh, Jerry Carino from Gannett, New Jersey. Just a variation of the question I asked the players, given the season that you had uh, and this group of guys, how difficult was it to see them, it end this way? You know what, Jerry? It's always going to end. It's always difficult when it ends. Um, I think this group of guys, this team, um, a lot of people doubted what this team could do and where they could get, uh, especially when, when Z went to the, went to the draft. Uh, I think every one of these kids stepped up, improved their game. I think Miles Powell had a phenomenally freshman year. So it, it's always difficult when it ends, but um, Man, I, I'm super proud of where these guys have brought this po program and getting back to the tournament for back to back for the first time in, since 93 and 94. Um, I like the direction that these guys are going and you know, we'll learn from this and we'll bounce back. That's, that's kind of what we've always done. Any other questions?
Thank you, Coach. Oh, we got one more? Okay. Um, He's going to get me either way. So <laughs> Zach, Zach Brazilian, your post. Kevin, just the emotions for you last year compared to this year. I mean, last year was disappointing. This year probably goes down. Maybe after the, the Western Kentucky and Michigan Seton Hall losses as one of the probably the hardest to take just for you at getting so close to winning a tournament game. What's it feel like? Yeah, it's tough. I'm not going to lie to you, Zach. It's tough. Um, you know, that, to have the kids play so – again, I, I don't look – it's not about me. College basketball is not about me. Um, I think it, it, it's going to be extremely difficult for these guys and how hard they worked, the hours and the – the travel, the everything. Um, you know, I, I feel for these kids because they they they've really bought in to each other. They bought into the the program. You know, I, I'm I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning and I'll do what I do do on Saturdays is go to my son's basketball game. Um, these kids, this is college basketball is about the kids, it's about the student athletes, it's about. Um, their emotions, and uh, I'm just so proud of what they've done for this program. It's going to be tough for them. It's going to be it's a hard. It's hard when you lose and, and you have the game, but that's hoops, man. That's basketball. It's life. You got to bounce back, and I got a lot of confidence in these guys. What we'll do and how we'll bounce back next year. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.